Both the governor's office and the Senate Republicans have assembled legislative packages to address the incidences of abuse and neglect among Minnesota's vulnerable adult population. Senator Karn Housley, chair of the Aging and Long-Term Care Committee, joins me in the studio to outline her legislative proposals. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Shannon. So there are a variety of measures in this package to prevent elder abuse and neglect, one of which is the installation of granny cams or uh, hidden cameras installed by family members when abuse or neglect is suspected. Over the last couple sessions, there's been a lot of conversation about privacy with granny cams. Have these privacy issues been worked out? They have, and as I, I've told you uh, before when I've been on the show, uh, this was a, a long summer and fall and, and early 2018 that we've had a lot of working groups and uh, we've met with the providers, we met with the family members, and, and this was a really big issue when it came to uh, what the family members and the residents of these nursing homes and assisted living really wanted. But, right, the privacy issue comes into uh, play there. What if there's a, another re a roommate in the same room? But it has been worked out, and, and the providers, the nursing homes, and the assisted living have agreed to, because the, it's a gray area for them. It's currently legal right now, except there are some nursing homes and assisted livings that have their own uh, uh, rules and that are submitted to the client when they, when they move in. So they have agreed to uh, the cameras now so the family members can check in on their loved ones. And so... At the way it looks now, we're, we're good to go on the, on the cameras in the residence room. You mentioned assisted living facilities, and, and I, it seems to me every time I drive a route I haven't taken in a few months, there's a new assisted living facility going up. up. Uh, these facilities are not licensed in the same way that nursing homes are, but it was one of the recommendations of the recent legislative, legislative auditor's report mm -hmm. to have licensing in place. Will, and then there's the jurisdictional issues, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's in charge when there are complaints. Does your package address this? Uh, you must be driving around the same neighborhood I am because, yeah, <laughs> they're popping up everywhere because we have thousands of people turning 65 and older every single day. I'm, my parents, and, and I'm getting there too, <laughs> um, uh, I have my AARP card. But it is, it's this, and a lot of people didn't know this, and I didn't either when I put my mom into a, a, a residence. Um, they, they, there is no jurisdiction over our assisted living. There isn't a licensing structure. So the Office of the Legislative Auditor, that was one of their big uh, comebacks was we need to figure this out. And, and it's, a, it's a huge issue. It's not solved in a knee-jerk legislation. So we've put together a working group to, and we want, I hate working groups. I can't stand them because sometimes they never get anything done. But this one has come back to the legislature early in 2019 and we need something concrete. Uh, to get done to get these uh, assisted livings under a licensure. But what we did do in the bill is we put the assisted livings under the Home Care Bill of Rights. So the Commissioner of Health does have jurisdiction over them if there needs to be a fine imposed. With some of these also assisted living, it's not clear to potential residents what services are included and what services are not included. So I think sometimes families think more is going to happen than will happen. Will some of these gray areas get cleared up as well? That, absolutely. That was one of the things that we heard from the consumers, the family members of the loved ones, is, and this happened to me too when, when my mom, would, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and we put her into an assisted living and I thought this assisted living that she was in could take her all the way to her end of life and she would move into memory care as her Alzheimer's worsened. But that is something we addressed in the bill that up front the assisted living or the facility has to tell you what services they provide so you're not getting that shock all of a sudden into you know a year or two or three of care that your your loved one has to move because you didn't know that they didn't provide the services that you thought up front they did you know another uh, important point I think is transparency for families looking to place a loved one how likely is it that at some point in the future families can go to a website and they can see a history of complaints and whether they were resolved and just sort of get an overview or a snapshot of the facility to see if it's it's a good place for their loved one. And that was another thing that we heard from the, the uh, AARP working group and, and I've heard from people and it was again a situation I was in when you when you're looking for a place and, and you see all the new ones popping up are they mm -hmm. good or are they bad do they have any violations yeah, again how do you, how know? Do you know? And the issue is that information is out there, it's just so difficult to find. So we do address that in the bill that, that um, 
it, it can uh, when you're searching a, a ABC nursing home that that nursing home will come up with the violations if there are any right there instead of having to go 16 layers deep to find out who owns it what's that website where's their headquarters base so we do address that in the bill that it has to be very clear when you go to search to, to find your, your nursing home a lot of this conversation began because the Office of Health Facilities Complaints was not doing its job. Um, there's new leadership in the organization. They reportedly now are moving in the right direction. But what more needs to be done with that agency? It's almost, it's almost, have, they, have the, they have the number of people working there. They've got 50 employees there, which is more than enough to get the job done. But it was mismanaged for a very, very long time. So. All of these reports that were filed were going nowhere, some of them being thrown into the garbage. So what needs to happen is, and there are wonderful people that work over there. I have to tell you, I've been over there a few times and they really are working hard, but the tools that they were given were horrific. So uh, we need to really hold the commissioner, Jen Malcolm, um, accountable and have her come back to the legislature and tell us how many reports were filed, how many were investigated, how long did it take you to investigate them, are you getting back to the families, and in law you're supposed to get back to them within 60 days, but they it was taking over a year. Mm -hmm. So make, quarterly in the bill it says that, that she has to come back and tell us, give us the statistics and how are they really doing instead of what they had been doing. So some legislative oversight of yep. the office. Uh, one more aspect of the bill, you kind of touched on this, is the creation of a few more work groups or task forces. What yet needs to be done? And, and it's, I think this is the frustrating part about uh, being in the legislature and hearing, hearing the issues of the people at home and they want change, things changed immediately and that's just not how it works because especially in the Senate, uh, we don't do knee-jerk reactions. The deliberative body. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, and so, so we really do want a, a thoughtful process on a lot of these things. And the licensure is is a, a big ball of wax, and we want to make sure that it's done right. So that's going to be a, a working group that I hope we can get that through. I know everybody wants it done faster, and I do too. But I want it done right because this goes into law forever. So I want to make sure that it's a very thoughtful process. Senator Housley, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you.